Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, it's my great pleasure to join you all here from Sydney. As mentioned, my name is Patrick Callio, and I have the privilege of leading the Embassy program in the Asia Pacific, which I must say is one of the most exciting, yet challenging parts of the world when it comes to discussions about sustainable fishing. Within the region, we have offices in Australia, Japan, China, Indonesia, Singapore, as well as in Busan here in South Korea. In today's presentation, I will introduce the MSC program and explain who MSC is and what we're all about. I'll talk about the issues our oceans face and how investors can build on the MSC process to implement their environmental, social and governance requirements, including reporting and tracking contributions to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I will also use my time today to provide some general information about how the MSC program and our tools can be used to support private and public financial institutions that are considering sustainability and investment decisions in the seafood sector. So who are we and what we're all about? MSC is an international non-profit organisation that was set up in the late 90s in a bid to try and address issues associated with overfishing and unsustainable practices. The idea was to try and complement work that NGOs, governments, and the fishers themselves were doing to improve fishery sustainability. The solution they decided on was to develop a market-based program that incentivized best practice by recognizing and rewarding those that could demonstrate they were managing their fishery sustainability. Our vision is split in two parts. MSC wants to see the world's oceans teem with life. This talks to our conservation objectives. But we're equally about seafood supplies that are safeguarded for this and for future generations. It's really important to understand that MSC is pro-fishing and pro-seafood. We just want it done on a sustainable basis. The latest figures from the SOFIA report show that more than a third of global fish stocks have been exploited beyond sustainable limits. And it appears a figure that's continuing to grow. Seafood consumption has risen by 122% in the past 30 years. And as population grows, people's wealth grows, demand for fish and seafood is continuing to grow. Billions of people around the world are relying on fish and seafood for their food security and livelihoods, which exacerbates the already daunting task of trying to feed a global population that's likely to push 10 billion a generation from now. And if you combine the effects of overfishing, pollution, global warming, increased acidification of our oceans, habitat destructions, our oceans are under more and more pressure than ever before. It's not all bad news, however. The FAO tells us that those fisheries where there is comprehensive management in place, stocks are improving. But those fisheries without the basics of good fisheries management are in decline. This tells me the problem is fixable and I remain optimistic for the future. With strong management, the problem of overfishing can be addressed. We've seen this in places like the US, Canada, New Zealand, and right here in Australia where I'm from. But we need to act now. This diagram illustrates how consumers and businesses' choices for MSC can lead to improved outcomes for our oceans. The first thing to understand about the MSC program is that it's voluntary. Fisheries must volunteer to be assessed. A team of scientists or auditors then go in and review all aspects of the fisheries performance. This is a rigorous 12 month process and it's very transparent. With lots of places where we encourage stakeholders participation um, and the end results are peer reviewed by scientists. If the fishery passes, and can maintain their products within a certified supply chain, they earn the right to use the MSE Eco Label. Once products are carrying the Eco Label, MSE and its partners get out there and encourage businesses and consumers to choose or preference products that carry the MSE Eco Label. This rewards fishers, and also those in the supply chain, that have gone through the efforts to achieve certification and encourages other fishers to make improvements to their fishery so they too can access the program and the benefits it provides. 
is actually these improvements that are made by fishers as they prepare for assessment, but also during the course of the certification, that directly benefit the health of the fish stocks and the ecosystems which they rely on. MATSEA's certification program is the only wild capture fishery certification program to meet the best practice requirements set by both UNFAO and ISIL, which is the Global Membership Association for Sustainability Targets. The IG targets set by the UN Convention on Biodiversity also include the MSC as an indicator. The MSC fishery standard is essentially at the core of the framework. Three principles, sustainability of the stock, ecosystem impacts and effective management, defined by 28 performance indicators, provide the basis for a comprehensive assessment of a fishery's sustainability and its impact. This means that fisheries that achieve certification have been able to demonstrate that they operate in a way that allows fishing to continue indefinitely, that they're able to maintain the structure, productivity, function and diversity of the ecosystem upon which the fishery depends, and that they meet all local, national and international laws and have an effective management system in place. In spite of the disruption and difficulties caused by the global pandemic, and there was many, the seafood industry and consumers demonstrated remarkable resilience and haven't rolled back on their commitments to sustainability. To date, there are some 516 fisheries certified or undergoing MSC assessment, equating to about 19% of the world's wild capture fish, fisheries landings. 20,000 products, some 63 countries now carry the eco label. Well over 100 companies have made public commitments to source MSC. I surprise you as well, but there's 46,000 sites with chain of custody across the world, including big brands in Korea such as Dong Won, Home Plus, IKEA, McDonald's, plus many more. These companies are now buying and selling MSC certified products. As many of you would know well, sustainable development goals provide a shared vision of the future and a framework to guide governments, industry, non-profit organisations like us at the MSC, as well as the entire global community in ways of working together for a better world. MSC certification is used by countries and organisations as part of their commitments towards delivering SDG 14. It's life below the water. So when a business commits to SDG 14, they commit to working to end overfishing, restore fish stocks, protect ecosystems, eliminate illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing. The SDGs are proving to be an exceptional tool in driving commitments and progress for our oceans. We even see many non-seafood companies in places like Japan commit to addressing SDG 14 by adopting MSC chain of custody and providing certified seafood in workplace canteens. This includes big companies like Panasonic, Yamaha, Coca-Cola and many others. Businesses that rely on natural resources are obviously strongly dependent on the long-term sustainability of that resource. This holds particularly true for investments in the fishery sector, where sustainable management of target species is absolutely critical to business success. The MSC process captures risk factors, including the health of the target stock, impacts on the marine environment, and things like illegal, unregulated, unreported fishing. It also assesses the effectiveness of governance systems in ensuring the continued sustainability of that resource. And as mentioned, all of which is independently tested by qualified third party auditors. And as the market demand for sustainable seafood continues to grow, MSC certification can help secure a fisheries license to operate, a social license to operate. It can help businesses access new markets and, and it can help create um, opportunities for price premiums. And we see this time and time again. I apologise, this is a busy slide, but I want to give you some quick examples of how investors can use, or I should say, and are using the MSC process to support identification, investment opportunities, informing risk, and facil facilitating reporting on ESG criteria. For example, we're seeing some financial institutions refer to the MSC in their eligibility criteria. 
The International Finance Corporation, IFC, includes a reference to MSC in its list of selected standards. Similarly, the Dutch Bank, Triodos, requires all clients in the fishing industry to meet international standards, includes MSC as an example. When it comes to due diligence, MSC certification can be indicated of reduced sustainability related risk. So development banks such as the Dutch FMO and the German KFW and Rabobank, all of which make references to sustainable certification standards. MSC scores on the performance indicators and the information contained within the assessment document can help investors identify areas that require improvement and provide an indication of funding requirements. Investors can also leverage the MSC to report on their contributions to UN SDGs. SDG 14 and SDG 12 are well used examples, but there's numerous links to the other SDGs as well. The MSC criteria can also be used as a tool to inform sustainability assessment, monitoring and reporting tools for investors and funders. So there's many uses. The MSC framework and certification is also being used in connection with a range of financial instruments. Some banks consider the MSC certification as an eligibility criteria for favourable loan conditions, such as lower interest rates. Rabobank, for example, includes MSC on the list of certifications that contribute to eligibility for its low impact loan products. MSC certification is used similarly as an eligibility criteria for green bonds. For instance, the Norwegian bank Spare Bank requires companies in the bond portfolio to have a portion of any seafood related turnover be MSC certified. MSC certification is also taken into account by a number of investment funds. There is a whole host of information publicly available to investors on the MSC website, including all the fishery certification reports, the annual surveillance reports, and all the information auditors use to determine a fishery's performance is outlined in these reports, as is the rationale for the scoring of each performance indicator. So there's a wealth of information there. And if the fishery is in the preparation phase, hasn't yet entered the assessment process, there's also information available there as well as they prepare for the assessment. Now there's the MSC pre-assessment report, which acts like a gap analysis aimed at evaluating a fishery's readiness for certification. And if the fishery actually needs to undergo improvement phase to prepare itself for assessment, these journeys often include time-bound action plans and regular progress reports. So lots of information. In summary, there are a lot of ways MSC certification process and reporting can support investors identify sustainable investment opportunities. They're also can help inform reputation and final financial risk decisions for businesses they work with in the fishery sector and seafood supply chains. And thanks to the various market benefits that can be found in the program, there are also opportunities for improved returns, bearing in mind, of course, the many factors that influence these outcomes. I do hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Um, if you'd like to know more about the MSC program or how the MSC program can be used to implement ESG requirements, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself or one of my colleagues from the MSC team in Busan. Thanks again. Um, enjoy the rest of the conference.